in the last week it's starting to cool off around here so I flipped my heat pump from cooling to heating and I've been using solar power to heat my bathroom with varying success. This morning being no different, being nice and sunny, I go and fire up the heat pump. Now I'm using a pump I made in a previous video to circulate the water around the system and this thing has been running for approximately four months as of now. Up until this point, the little pump has given me about zero issues. However, when I plugged it in this morning, it didn't do anything. It's running, but it's not pumping any water. So I think it's finally wore out to the point where it's no longer sealing enough to move water. Now when I first showed this pump, I was using 21 volts to power it, but I have currently dropped it down to 9 volts. I'm sure I could plug the 20 volt power supply back into it and it would work fine for a bit, but it's a sign that it's on the way out anyways. Since everything was 3D printed originally, I can just reprint the parts, but you know, why reprint the same thing? So I've done a few upgrades over the time between when I originally did this and now. So I think it's about time to implement some of those upgrades and you know, make this system a little nicer looking and maybe a little bit more efficient. But before I get into the new pump, I'd like to take apart the old pump and see where the wear occurred. So after getting it apart, I'll look at here at the housing face, and you can see here that there's like a divot ring. Now I'll pull out the gears, and the, the ring gear looks fine. But we'll pull out the pinion gear here, and yeah, you can see the wear on the teeth, and the shaft is really uh, rusted and swollen. Stainless is definitely preferred for this application. I just don't have any six millimeter stainless and didn't feel like turning any. The uh, housing otherwise seems all right. No wear or anything in here. And then we get into the bushing hole. And we'll slip the shaft in here and you can see that it's, uh, it's rather loose. Now, judging by how this thing vibrated, I'm assuming the biggest problem was the long drive being imbalanced and eventually that imbalance or in straightness like it might have, that piece of four millimeter shaft might not have been straight because you know cheap stuff from china it uh, might have wobbled and pushed that over and then that causes that wear ring and everything otherwise uh, there's room for improvement here anyway so we're going to look at the new one now. so the immediate difference is the motor mount and the elimination of the long shaft now some of these motors have a knurled shaft so I designed the coupling for the knurled shaft and apparently this one does not so I use a little bit of super glue to hold the coupling onto the motor. Now this one has an o-ring in the back of the housing I changed a couple things up and I'm still playing with the depth of the o-ring groove compared to 3D printing to get it exactly to the right fit and squish ratio. Also on the updated pump I've uh, decreased the tolerance from about three quarter millimeter to 0.25 millimeter as well as printing the ring gear with a wear ring or wear groove maker so the idea behind this is it's a small fine line that runs around the print or the ring gear that should wear into the housing and shouldn't take that long to wear down and that'll create a perfect seal or at least as what close as you can get to a perfect seal with 3d printing I have also removed the ports from the rear of the housing and moved them to the front panel of the housing. Seems to improve efficiency, flow, and just general design and fitment. And last but not least, I decided to get rid of that crappy plastic fish aquarium and make a proper jar lid or something else and I decided with the jar lid to mount the pump on, everything's a little bit more contained and the motor is out of the container with the water so it's less likely to rust and get humidity or splash. Now because of the wearing you kind of have to put this pump together loosely like the front cover loose everything else tight and turn it on and slowly tighten the screws over about an hour and so that wearing wears in properly and seals against the face of the housing. So about a month ago there was a lot of hype on the internet for about a week about sand batteries. I didn't really pay too much attention to it but it did pique my interest a little bit. So I'm going to make a quick attempt at my own little sand battery and see if what kind of heat bank it comes out to be. 
So for my quick half-ass attempt, I'm just going to take a little styrofoam cooler, run some hose in and out of it, and uh, fill it full of sand. And then, uh, you know, see what kind of heat it holds. Uh, I went from the quarter-inch line to a half-inch line, or, well, 12 mil line, I guess. Whatever it is. The idea is to uh, kill some of the flow rate inside the heat bank and let the water transfer the heat quicker or more effectively. Here everything's set up, hooked up, ready to go. I have some valves to isolate the heat pump out of the system if I need to or want to. And the satin sand battery is all hooked up and ready to go. So I'm going to plug it in and you can hear it. It's under a fair amount of load. It should free up a little bit. I still think it's got a little bit of wear wearing in to do. I currently have the heat pump isolated out of the system and I'm just trying to normalize the temperature with the sand battery. In the meantime, since this had failed, I did have a temporary pump running it in the background. I also come across a few leaks. These keys that I got off the shelf somewhere, uh, they don't quite fit the tubing, so I'm either going to try and put some shrink tubing over top of them to tighten them up a bit, or uh, just find better keys or make something. One part of this system I haven't really covered in very much detail is what I'm currently using for a heat pump. So as you can see it here, the fan on the heat sink is the uh, well hot side in the summer and cool side in the winter when I switch it. And on the inside, you've seen the lines that run to the water block that's on the back of this whole thing that you can't really see. But in between the hot side and the cold side are two TECs or Pelche coolers running at 60 watts each in series. So essentially I got it down to about 35 watts on 12 volts. Now I'm currently powering this with one 40 watt panel, although it's not very bright out today, so that's not running very effectively. In the last four months of use, I've learned that the heat pump I'm using isn't that effective because of the heat sink on the outside not being large enough, basically not having a large enough surface area and or heat mass to transmit the energy I need. The solution to this would be to have a water to water heat pump and some sort of rad and tank external as well as the tank and system inside. I have been working on this as well as taking my new pump design and implementing it in my external tank. I have found a metal tank from a coffee maker that will work perfectly. I 3D printed the top and I will mount my new pump system in this with a long pickup tube so I can pick up a fair amount of water from the middle of this tank. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm kind of slow to get at certain things. so. I'm not exactly certain as to when I'll get this done. I need to get my CNC mill fixed. I need to do a lot of other things before I can get to this, so it might be a little while. But I do fully intend to make a larger heat pump using four Pelche coolers, uh, maybe six, depending on what I'm using as a source. I do have a 24 volt solar source that's much larger than this little 40 watt panel I'm using on the current system. Well, that's pretty much all I got for this video. I'm sure I'll be back with more. You guys know the drill, but like and subscribe the whole nine yards, and I'll be back with more. Have a good one, guys.